Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Now, I want to take just a moment and explain why we started this program. Some of you may have seen our other TV show called At Your Leisure, and it is a recreation show that covers the state and all different kinds of family-oriented recreation. In the process of covering some of the issues and stories that take place across the state, it became obvious to us that a lot of people just really didn't understand county government and the issues that affect county government. They didn't even understand what county government was. Do you know? Well, don't feel bad. Most people we've talked to really don't have a clue. So that's why we started this program. It's a chance for us to, without you having to take a civics class, actually learn about how counties work in the state and how your county government functions. But in addition to that, it's a chance for you to see the issues that face county government because the impacts that affect county government have more effect on you personally than any other level of government. So with that being said, we're going to go on to this week's episode and start by trying to figure out how money flows through a county. Here's Malia Bascom. So, we're going to begin this episode of the county seat by talking about how money flows through the county. With that report, here's Malia Bascom. Beautiful, isn't it? It's the Green River. It flows through six counties in the state of Utah. Hi, I'm Malia Bascom. Today on the county seat, we're going to be talking about another Green River that flows through every county in the state, the river of your tax dollars. Property tax is the primary source of revenue for most local governments and the only one that is actually collected at the county level. Property taxes are used to fund county services like fire and police protection, libraries, jails, schools and road repairs, health services, parks, and a lot more. All real estate and personal property are subject to taxation in the state of Utah, unless it is expressly exempt by law. And that is where the stream of property tax money starts flowing. The headwaters of property taxation starts with the county recorder. It's the recorder's job to keep track of the legal descriptions of all the property in the county and to record the deeds of ownership. Without these records, counties would not be able to identify individuals and companies who actually own the property. When a document is brought to our office across our counter in the mail, it is checked to see if it meets the state requirements for recording. If it does, it's immediately recorded because it's time sensitive. When it's through those processes, it's taken to the assessor's office. In order for each parcel of real property to be fairly taxed, a value for the property has to be established. Each year, the county assessor determines a fair market value and taxable value of an individual's property. And every river has its tributaries, and the tax river is no exception. Commercial property, real property, you know, the land and the buildings. We also have uh, cabins and farmland, business taxes, equipment, the items which they use in their day-to-day -day operation. After the assessor has done his work, he informs the different taxing authorities that have to create budgets and set tax rates. Our tax river is now flowing around several islands in the stream. The next place the river flows is to the county auditor. The auditor is responsible for the financial information of the county. It is the auditor's job to certify the tax rate and notify the taxpayers of the amount of money that the assessor says they owe by each July. Then, after the tax notices have been sent out, the money flows to the auditor's office. The auditor is um, responsible for the financial information of the county, and so any money coming into the county initially comes through the auditor's office. Um, between the auditor's office and the treasurer's office, we provide the checks and balances for the county. So um, money coming into the county is receipted into my office and then taken to the treasurer's office where there it's deposited into the bank account. So far, we've covered how the money gets in the county's coffers. Put on your galoshes. We're going to follow the river to find out where your tax dollars are going. The county treasurer is the next to the last stop before our river hits the delta and then splits in several different directions. Taxes and other revenues come from the auditor to the treasurer who deposits them and then gives most of it away to the other taxing entities. It's a lot to keep track of. I have about 30 different accounts, that bank accounts, that I have to keep track of and balance to daily and monthly and you know everything has to, everything has to balance. 
On average, over half of your property tax goes to local school districts, 14% to cities, and another 14 to special taxing districts, while only 18% goes to the county. What money remains in the county is then distributed to pay the county bills, like payroll and department expenditures to keep the county running. And that's where the river ends. For the county seat, I'm Willie Abascom. When we come back, we are going to actually talk about one of the other areas that has a big impact on counties and their coffers in the state. It's public lands. And we will be discussing some changes that may be affecting public lands in rural Utah and the resource management plans. Stay with us. We'll be back with more of the county seat in just a minute. <laughs> 